Hi, in the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to create a solar system using Max MSP. In this patch, I've created a sun, two planets orbiting around that sun and a few moons orbiting around those planets. This series is also a good introduction to the 3D world of Jitter, all those OpenGL objects that let you create 3D scenes in real time. In these videos, we are going to look at how to create 3D scenes, how to create objects in these scenes, how to make these objects move and rotate in relation to each other, as well as how to apply textures, light, and a skybox into this rendering context, as well as moving and focusing the camera on different places. So, let's begin. To do anything in Jitter, in the world of JitGL, there are a few key objects we have to create and work with. And one of these objects is JIT.world. This is the Jitter world context, the rendering context. This is what creates the, the window in which we are going to see your visuals appear. And I am going to recreate this because I want to give it a few arguments, a few attributes. So first of all, it's always the best practice to give this JIT world, any rendering context, a name. And this can be any word, it can be tomato, it can be pencil, it can be space, I'm just naming it space now. And I'm then going to give it a few attributes. So first of all, the size, size of the window and also size of the render it is going to create. And for now, I'm just going to make it 320 to 240. We can change this later by resizing the window. And I'm also going to enable floating window style which is going to make sure that this window stays on top even when I'm messing around in my patch. Now, to start working with this JIT world, we need to turn it on. It is just like Metro or Tempo. It's just like those objects. You have to create a trigger by pressing T on your keyboard, connect it to JIT world's inlet, and then turn it on to start rendering. We can check if it is truly on by creating a JIT.FPS GUI and FPS meter and connect it to the middle inlet of our JIT.world, which sends out bang on each render. So if it's 60 frames per second, it will send out 60 bangs per second. And this is what FPS GUI measures to find out what the FPS is. All right, so far so good, but of course we don't have anything in our, in our world, in our little space right now. So I'm going to create the quintessential 3D object object in JITGL, JIT.GL, which is JIT.GL.GridShape. And as the first argument, I'm going to type in the rendering context's name, which is space. And it is immediately going to generate, it's going to create the sphere in this window, which is a bit too big, which has a few rough edges here. And uh, it doesn't really look 3D, but we are going to get there. Do note that we don't need to connect this JIT GL grid shape to JIT world in any way. Just by typing in as an argument the rendering context's name, JIT GL grid shape knows that it's supposed to render inside this window, inside this context. Even if I don't type in the argument space, it is going to do the same thing. It just knows to seek out and find a rendering context. But in case in the future we work uh, with multiple rendering contexts in a single patch, which we absolutely will, I'm going to stick to my best practice and type in space here. Now, I can change the, the scale, so the size of the sphere. For example, by default, it's one. I can make it 0.2 to make it tinier. But instead, I'm going to create a jit.gl.camera, jit.gl camera, which is going to control from which point we look at the scene, this window into the 3D world created by jit.world. I'm going to type in space uh, as an argument because uh, this is also a jit.gl object. And then I can give it the attribute position. And this will accept three floats, uh, going to be x, y, and z coordinates and 0, 0, 0 would be really the middle point of this world. And by default, JITGL camera is going to initiate itself in a 0, 0, 2. So it's going to lean a bit back from the middle point on the Z axis. And if I want, I can change this to, let's say, 0, 0, oops, 0, 0, 5 maybe. Yeah, 0, 0, 5. Now I have not changed the 
size of the sphere, I just look at it from a bit farther away. It's a bit of a 3D thinking for you. You know, instead of, uh, even though it looks the same, we are not changing the size, we are changing the point from which we look at the object, which creates the same result. It's just a different way of thinking. Okay, now there are a few other attributes we can give to this JIT GL grid shape, right? Uh, to make it look a bit nicer. For example, I can enable lighting. Lighting enable one is going to calculate how light affects this object and you're going to see all these polygons pop up. Bit of that PlayStation 1 look, uh, which is pretty cool if you ask me. If I want to make it look even cooler, I can turn on Smooth Shading. Smooth Shading 1 is going to calculate smooth over those polygons and give it really this really nice, smooth, spheric look. So right now I just want the lighting enable one version, no smoothing, so it will become more apparent, easier to see if we rotate this object. If I want, I can also mess with the color of this object, so I can give it an attribute of color and then three float numbers to uh, in RGB format. For example, if I want a nice green color, I can type in zero for red, so let's see, one for green and 0 0.3 for blue and gets this nice green bluish shape. Okay, I also want to zoom out a bit further because we're going to be adding a few more guys. Now, if I want to rotate this sphere, right? Uh, I, there are a few ways of doing this. For example, I can change the position attribute or the rotate attribute or the rotate XYZ attribute. I can send messages uh, changing these attributes, but a much easier way is to use the Jitter library jit.anim, which comes with a jitanim node, jitanim drive, and jitanim path. And right now I want to explore jitanim drive, which is going to animate a 3D transform. So first of all, what you need to do after creating this object is to connect it to a 3D model, a 3D object, in this case jitgl grid shape. And maybe it's a bit backwards, but you need to take the outlet, the first outlet of JITANIM drive, and connect it to the first inlet of JITGL grid shape, and nothing is going to happen because we need to either send it a message or give it an attribute that will describe a transform, a transformation. You can look at the reference of this object for more examples, but right now I'm concerned with turning this object, rotating this object continuously, a continuous animation. And this turn is something we describe in three axes, and on the x-axis, on the y-axis, and on the z-axis. The number is going to be the speed of this turn, right? For example, if I type 1, 0, 0, this guy is going to start rotating on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis. I can increase this number to make it rotate even faster, right? I can even I don't know, type in like 100 or something, and Whoa, and it goes really fast, okay. No need to make ourselves dizzy like that. And if, you know, we usually imagine a planet rotating uh, on the y-axis, right? So if I type in turn 0, 1, 0, it is going to rotate nice like this. It is a bit slanted and that's because we rotated it on the x-axis. So if I just reinitiate this object, it is going to be fixed. Okay, so we can imagine this as the sun of our solar system. We can worry about the colors and the looks of these objects later, but let's say this is the sun. And now I want to add the first planet in this, uh, this world of objects, so I'm just going to create another JIT GL grid shape. And uh, let's also type in space, of course, and let's change this guy's scale. Let's make it tinier. Let's see, a third tiny row point, 33, and I'm going to type in position, uh, let's say 3.0.0. Right, all of these JITGL grid shape objects are initialized in the position 0, 0, 0. So if I type in 3.0.0 0, 0 as a position, it's going to move to the right on the x axis. But this is a bit too far away, so let's uh, type 2. 0, 0 instead, and let's also give it the attribute lighting enable 1. Ah, much better. And, you know, I can just be very lazy. I can copy this JITANIM drive, also connect it to this JITGL grid shape, and okay, it's turning, it's rotating. We already have the beginnings of our solar system here, but we need to find a way to rotate 
the smaller object around the bigger object, right? That is going to be our main challenge here. And to do this, we need to look into jit.anim.node. This is going to be key here. And what jitanim node does it is creates parent child parent child relationships, uh, which sounds a bit weird, but it will become a bit more clear in a second as I explain it between transformations of objects. So to explain this better, I think it's the best if I just show it to you. So let's get rid of these jitanim drives for now. Let's just make them stay like this and. I'm just going to connect this to my smaller planet, just like how I connected JitAnim drive to this JitGL grid shape. And as soon as I do it, whoa, you'll see. You'll see that it immediately snaps back to the middle. Its shape, its position has switched back to default. Its uh, scale, its size has switched back to default, even though I have given it these nice attributes here. So what gives, right? So here's the thing. Here's the most important thing about JitAnim node. If you connect JitAnim node to a JitGL grid shape or any kind of 3D object, JitGL object on Max, on Jitter, it is going to overtake the position and the rotation and the scale of that object. It will not matter what you type what you type in as an attribute to a JitGL grid shape here, it is going to refer to JitAnim node for these transformations. So I can delete the scale and position here, and it is not going to change anything. And instead, I can give these attributes to JitAnim node. I can make it scale 0.33. I can give it the position 2.0.0, and it is back to normal. And then if I want to animate this, if I want this to rotate, I can just create my JIT anim drive. Uh, let's see again, turn zero, one, zero, and connect this to JIT anim node, since JIT anim node is now in charge of all these transformations. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this JIT, the original JIT GL grid shape, what is going to be our sun. So let's also set the scale to one and the position to zero, 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 and give it that nice turn. All right. Now, this is the exact same thing we had before we added JIT anim node. So here's the trick. We just have to do a single thing, one little thing to make the smaller planet rotate around the bigger planet. And that is to connect JITANIM node's first outlet into the inlet of the second JITANIM node. And there you go, it's rotating. Simple, but very, very, very effective. So what is going on here? So as I've said, JITANIM node works with parent and child relations, right? Which means that if I connect these two JITANIM nodes together, the one that is being connected to the second one becomes the parent. So the child's transformations are always affected by the parent. They're always relative to the transformations of the parent. So this means that if the parent's JITANIM node is rotating, right, which is what it is doing, it's turning, everything in the child JITANIM node is going to turn as well. So this position to zero, zero is going to stay the same. We are not really changing the position of this object, even though it looks like we are, but we are rotating the entire scene around the parent JITANIM node. So this is, I mean, this uh, does make your head spin at the beginning, but uh, if you experiment with this, these JITANIM nodes create a bunch of hierarchies between different levels of JITANIM nodes, you'll see that a lot of cool things are possible without having to worry about complicated maths and relationships between numbers, and you can just connect these cool JITANIM nodes. If I want, I can also add a third planet, right? Or not really a planet, but maybe a moon on this first planet that I have. So I'm just going to copy this entire guy. You can see it created this another JITGL object here. And I'm going to make it even tinier. Let's say 0.1. And I'm going to change its position to 1, 0, 0. I'm going to do this because it's probably going to be relative to my child JITANIM node. Right, so if I just connect this here, aha. 
You see, it's a bit too close, it seems, so I'm going to move it a bit farther. So position two, zero, zero. There we go. Now we have a nice moon next to our first planet. We can also give these a bit of colors, right? Let's make the first planets uh, red and let's make the moon, uh, I don't know, let's make it blue. Let's just go with nice primary colors, RGB colors. And uh, before we move on in the next video, something fun to do might be to change the background. So the background is this dull gray right now, but we can change the erase color, erase underscore color attribute of jit.world, or we can send it the message, erase underscore color, and then four floating point numbers, four decimal numbers in uh, the shape of RGBA colors. Right, so if I create this pack, erase color, and I create these four floating point number boxes, and I connect all of these guys here, for example, the first channel would make the background a bit red, more red, the second one would make it a bit green, the third one would make it a bit blue. I can set all of these to zero if I want to have a black background, and then I can start messing with the alpha channel. Right, if I lower the alpha lower than one, you'll see that the objects are going to start leaving trails. And if I want, I can just set this to zero and then the objects are just going to leave continuous trails, which creates a cool effect. And then if you want, you can also change this turn, right? Again, I can make it rotate uh, in a really crazy way, which creates a strange orbit, which would make this procedural painting. And uh, if you want to go in the world of generative art, or if you want to control these transformations by music, for example, you would try to format a turn message getting the numbers from an outside source. But in the case of our solar system, it might be the best to just type in turn 0, 1, 0. Let's also reset the alpha. And there you go, we have the beginnings of a nice solar system. So in the next video, we're going to continue with uh, making this look a bit prettier, add a few more planets, at skin, so really planet surfaces on those planets and also a nice space background that will move with the camera, what is called a skybox, a bounding box. And I will see you then.